Welcome back to the Davy Brown 990 Restoration Channel. My name is Barry, for those of you who are new to the channel. Right, today's video is going to be why you don't use hammers. Because it gets expensive. All of you that have been watching the channel regularly are aware of the work that's gone into the clutch. Well, if you watch the clutch, watch this video on repairing the clutch, and we'll get to the end, and you'll see what happens when you're about five minutes away from completing it. And then it costs you a phone call to Barclay Williams and a load of money to have a clutch plate sent up, because that one is knackered. Right, watch it, enjoy, stop using hammers. Well, welcome back to the Davy Brown 990 Restoration Channel. My name is Barry, if it's your first time here. Um, today, we're going to be re starting to reassemble the clutch. And we're going to start with the fingers. And we're going to be building one finger up, and then I'll, we'll video that. And then what I'll do is I'll just crack on, get the other two done, get it ready for the next stage of the clutch assembly when we start and put all the plates back together. Right. Let's crack on. Right, so today, what we've got, we've got my finger, rattle, anti-rattle spring, the little core for the bearing, 19 rollers, a spring for to retain the uh, release plate. Up here I've got six brand new little circlips, six new washers, three pins. So we're going to put this one together on video and then what we'll do is move that in a little bit. We're going to put this one together on video and then what I'll do is I'll pause it, I'll crack on get the other two rebuilt and we'll move on to the next stage of the rebuild of the clutch. Back in a minute. Right, first thing we're going to do, we're going to rebuild our little bearings here. So we're going to put a bit of grease on the inside of here. I'm going to put my 19 rollers in and I'm going to pop it inside the finger. So, let's get on. Pop a little bit of grease inside there to glue the rollers in. This will keep them all in place while we're busy. popping them in. Right here we'll go. Let's this is a fiddly little thing this. One should be nineteen of these. Two Three, four, five, six, the idea of the grease is just to keep them in place so we can get them into the finger with the pin. Doesn't matter if they're not tidy going in, because they'll tidy their cells up as they fill up. So one tipped in there. What you don't want to do <clears throat> is lose any of these. Right. 
light's not very good today, is it? Hmm. We're getting there. Suppose you'd get away with just just using your fingers for this. But I'm trying to keep my fat fingers out of it. So hopefully you can see what's going on. I think this is going to be the uh, the fiddliest bit. Three left. What you've got to remember as well is try not to squeeze the needles too tight because if you grip them with the pliers or your tweezers too tight there's a big chance they'll fly and the opportunity to find one of these on the floor is just about zero. One left. One left. Create a bit of space for them. Nineteen rollers in. Now, what we want to do now? Want a finger? Little circle clip. Pin. Right, the pins had a very quick polish. You can see lines on it, but it does not. You cannot feel anything, there's nothing there to feel. What we want to do, we want to pop a brand new circlip on the end. Like that. Now, this is a good bit. Pop this Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got a needle jumped out. They didn't want to play games, that one. Right, he's back in. Okay. Run that over there. Make sure they're all flush with the edge. Now, pop that down there. Ooh, yeah. This is where you need three hands. Again, there's a little needle just jumped there. Right, we'll pop it back out. Put 
put that needle back in place. Again, just flatten it. Make sure that the, the needles are in there. Again. Get my pen. I'm blocking the bottom as well, just in case I dislodge any needles. Quick check. We're well, looking good. Bring that into the light so you can see. There we go. We're in. Second show clip on. Jobs are good. Right. One roller bearing put back in. Now. Next thing, anti-rattle spring. The rattle spring obviously opens there and one end goes into each of that of that pin. There's just a little slight recess in it. Um, get a tiny bit of grease. Right, tiny little bit of grease on either side. Now, again, this is where you're going to need three hands, I think. One side in, but it's the wrong way, isn't it? You're dafty. Right, one side in. Pull like buggery. Two in. All right. God, that took some fiddling and doing, I tell you. Things a bit of a wipe. Okay. And finally, the little retaining spring that goes on the end down here. So we've got new pin, two new washers, one washer on. Through the finger. Last washer on. Use our pliers, eh? Use our pliers. And just open that gently. And that's enough. Right. Jobs are good. So, what we're going to do now, we'll, I'll crack on, I'll get the other three done, and then we'll be sorted with our fingers, and um, we will then move on to rebuilding the clutch disc, the clutch pressure plate. Um, 
I need, I still need, well, there's a pin we need to make, three pins for here, remember we've got the steel, but I've got three pins to make, drill the holes in for the little split pins to go through for to fasten this to the pressure plate. Uh, and I need to find something to do about this shatter here, there's a shatter here. So there we go, that's the fingers done, let's crack on, I'll come back to you when I finish the three. Alright, not belong. So, there we go. My three fingers back together, all sorted. All bearings is good. No, no notchiness. That one made a little bit of noise when we put it together. But uh, once we started rotating the bearings, it was good. So, now what we're going to do, we're going to pop them away in a bag, keep them clean. Um, we're going to start and put the rest of the clutch back together. But before we can, we need to make three pins to fit in here, to put the spit pins in, to locate those in the pressure plate itself. So we'll get on, we'll get those pins made and then we'll start putting my clutch pressure plate back together. Back in a minute. Right, my steel's come so we're going to make my replacement pins. These are our old ones. A piece of steel's obviously arrived. We're going to cut this into lengths uh, and we're going to drill a couple of holes in the end, make our replacement pins. But we're going to just cut roughly three bits of steel to length here. So it doesn't got to be hyper accurate, it just need to be long enough. Right, we've got our three lengths, we're going to mark them out now, um, we'll go through the process, mark them one out and drill them one and we'll show you what I say because the other two is going to be exactly the same. But we'll take you through the process of marking these out and sorting them out. Right, so in the absence of layout ink, I put black permanent marker on the ends where my lines are going to go. And I say this is just, just roughly this. And you'll see why in a minute. So, roughly there, roughly there. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a small square needle file, and I'm going to put two flats, tiny little flats, there and there, and then I'm going to centre pop them. I'm just going to put two, one there. That's enough, and another one on that end. And this is just so when we centre pop it and we come to drill it, the drill point has got a flat surface to run on, and not not a curved surface, and it's not trying to run away. And I've got a hammer, centre pop. I want to just, you can still see the mark on there where I need to be. I'm 
remember this is a two mil drill we're putting in so though these don't need to be volcanic craters just need to be big enough big enough to get the chisel end of the drill in right let's go and set it up with a block get ready to drill it bit of plus gas on the job set my drill over here this drill is doing just probably just over 3000 rpm it's two mil Just being very gentle here with this, letting the drill go through its own pace, watching the cuttings coming out. Because uh, you don't want to be overheating the drill tip. Parallel is moving. Going through. There we go. Right. This V block and clamp and the parallels are made when I was an apprentice back in 1975 I made these as part of our training jobs in the training centre at Wellen Electric Bellington Station All this is is a hole to put a split pin in. Get in there. There we go. Jobs are good now. Yep, just deburr it. Right, let's quickly grab a split pin. I'll try a split pin. And my thought, oh, there we go. Job done, right. What I need to do now on the grinder, I'm just going to shape these ends up a little bit so they're more like that. So they've got a bit of a lead in, so when you're putting them into the hole, they can uh, they can guide themselves in where's a bit that are a bit flat there but we'll pop them in we'll get them done I'll come back to you when we get that ground up so we're going to reassemble our clutch pressure plate today so we've got here the actual this is the drive plate for the main tractor 
the PTO one sits under here. So, it's our PTO release plate. We'll pop that on what we've got here. We've got, a, we've got a pop mark here and a pop mark here. So they go together. Now, blue springs with a little yellow spring square onto the main drive plate. The shorter but bigger diameter yellow springs go onto the PTO plate. We'll just pop around, put these. Yep, that's the wrong one. That goes in the hole. That goes on there. That goes in there. That goes in there. And that goes on there. Now we've got these two that are loose. Because they're just loose in the housing. And they came off there. So we'll pop them on there. Alright, let's get the uh, top plate. Got my top plate. This has got a pop mark in here, so that goes to there. But now, try and get all these springs into their respective holes. I'll go on. There we go. Right. Top hat on. Now, let's get ready to compress this. Put a bit of angle iron and there's top as best we can is that long enough to fit through oh yes Okay. Copious amounts of grease on the thread. Let's put a washer on. Will a washer? Yes, a washer on. Stop it binding. Now, let's have a look here. I'll pop that. Through there. Nut washer. Increase inside the nut. Let's pop this together. look make sure that's pulling down square make sure our fingers are going to come through the holes make sure everything's still in place that'll 
take a while, but we'll get there. This has been a long time coming, isn't it? Putting this back together. Of course, then we've got to reset the finger heights. Right, we'll put a couple of lock nuts on. I hope we're starting to rotate. As you can see, the springs are getting very nearly to the end of that travel. in here they're very nearly compressed fully and once they get fully compressed actually a lot There. We're getting there. Maybe another couple of turns. I'll be able to get my pins in. That's about a lot. So that's why you never use a hammer. You smash the lug off the clutch. I wouldn't care, I wasn't hitting it that hard. But broke my own rules, broke my clutch. That's what happens. I think when I spoke to Stuart at Bartley Williams, I think it was 275 quid. Ouch. 
that I've just paid for that. I had I thought for a little while about getting in touch with Colin, see if he had a one, but then I thought we could be waiting a couple of weeks for it to come down. We could be in the same boat. It could be, you know, and I just thought, now, nah, bite the bullet. We've messed on long enough with this one. Go and get another one. I'm trying to convince myself that was probably already damaged and just the tapping knocked it off. But at least it didn't come to bits inside the tractor when everything was put back together. At least it's come to bits now. So new clutch is on order. Um, it's on its way from Barclay Williams. We'll get it sorted out. We'll get it put in and we'll get caught up with our jobs. Did I learn anything from it? Yes, I did. I learned an awful lot about the clutch. Never ever took one to bits in my life. Um, quite pleased with what we got done with it in terms of rebuilding all the fingers and the bearings and getting everything coated up and cleaned and sorted out and put it back together. Just unfortunate that that came away. But as I say, far better do it now is do it in three or four weeks time when it's in the tractor. So, would I do it all again? Yes, I think I would. I think I would still strip another clutch down, even though I haven't got a press. It would be a lot easier. It would be a real lot easier if you have a press, because you can get it compressed right down onto the floor, and you can manipulate things, and you know it's square. Um, the big thing, the big moral of the story is, don't use hammers. I wouldn't care. I had tried the pin in all of those holes and the three pins that were made went into all of the holes, into the fingers, into the clutch plate, everything. I just didn't want to that time. Never mind. Right. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for visiting. Um, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, like and subscribe. Tell your mates. Um... Hopefully the videos are of some use to you guys out there. continues to grow steadily, which is good. I'm over the moon. Thank you very much for all you guys out there putting your time in to come and visit us, watch our videos, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to it. Um, please tell your mate so. It would be nice to get a few more subscribers and get to keep pushing it skyward. You never know, do you? So, remember, don't overthink it. It's just nuts and bolts. And if it news hammers. See you later now. Take care.